Hey everyone, welcome. Can you all hear me okay? Looks good? There will be some Q&A portions of this where I ask you to raise your hand, so let's try that one more time. Can everyone hear me okay? Excellent, thank you very much. I appreciate the participation. My husband's a high school teacher, and so I'm very used to call and response um, to get attention. However, I will not be doing, if you can hear me, clap once. Um, we're not quite at that level yet. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate the participation though, regardless. Is everyone having a good time at TC19 this year? Excellent. I think I say this every year, this is my seventh TC and I cannot believe how many people there are. Every year it seems to like not just go up in the exponential amount that they say it is, but like double in size. I don't know how it happens every year, but I really appreciate you all coming out to hang out with me today. Hopefully you all know that we're here to talk about table calculations, yes? Okay, good. Um, who loves table calculations? That's kind of the reaction I expected. Not too many people have um, an affinity for table calculations that brings joy the same way like chocolate does, right? That's not exactly where we're at in life. Um, table calculations tend to be that experience where you know you're supposed to use a table calculation or you've been told you're supposed to use a table calculation, but you're not entirely sure why. Hopefully today we'll clear that up for everyone. Um, the goal for today's session is to just get everyone a little bit more comfortable and confident in working with table calculations. The inspiration for this session has come from my last seven years at Tableau. I've worked in both training and professional services, as well as sales, with basically customers on every end of the spectrum, from brand new users who have a lot of experience in something else or have never touched an analytics tool before, to very advanced users. And in this time, there's one thing I've realized. Regardless of how long you've been using Tableau, it could be seven days, could be seven years, even longer, we all have those days where we just absolutely suck at calculations. <laughs> Sounds like y'all know what I'm talking about. Just in case you don't believe me, here's a text that I sent a coworker the other week. I was trying to figure out how to solve a table calculation and I was like going down the rabbit hole of blog posts on the internet. Who's done that before? Okay, and then at like 5 p.m. on Friday, I was watching a like, video and suddenly realized that this was in version seven of Tableau. Um, not exactly the most relevant content for what I was trying to accomplish, but I was just so dead set on trying to find the answer to my challenge that I couldn't see through the weeds and just kept reading and watching videos and reading and watching videos and not getting there. So that's kind of the impetus for this song, or this, this song. You don't wanna hear me sing, this session. The one thing I've learned in preparing for this session though is that we all are not alone. Um, everyone here basically said they can relate to having happy hour plans on a Friday, trying to finish a calculation, or maybe your boss just wants you to finish a report and you can't figure out what exactly you're doing wrong. It turns out, According to the internet, we're not alone. Um, everyone seems to have a lot of problems with how to understand and adjust to table calculations. And a lot of people have tried to find a unified theory of calculations, and you can see a couple diagrams of what those look like um, up here on the screen. Uh, today, we are not going to be finding a unified theory of calculations. Today's goal is simply to prevent us from going down the rabbit hole of looking through the online help in the community forums and just instead give us a few logical steps that we can follow the next time we have a stubborn calculation challenge. So your senior schnauzer isn't yelling at you to take him for a walk, your boss isn't asking you why a report's not done and you can just get home from the office on time. And Next time you're trying to find a calculation answer, it feels less like you're trying to accomplish this, and a little bit more something like this. How does that sound to everyone? Perfect. So for today's introductions, we are check, done with those. 
We're now going to jump into doing a quick review of Calculations 101. This is going to be covering basic calculations in Tableau, as well as level of detail calculations. I think it's really important to have a foundation in kind of how these types of calculations differ in comparison to table calculations. That way we all have the same baseline of information before we jump into troubleshooting table calculations. We're then going to talk about what exactly is a table calculation, how it's different from those basic or level of detail calculations that we all have heard about. We're gonna break down that pesky compute using dialogue, and we're gonna talk about how we can set up a view for success in building out and solving table calculations. Sound good to everyone? Okay. So the first type of calculation we're gonna be talking about is a row level calculation. Before we dive into any of the calculation fun, we're gonna be talking about the data set that we're using. If you haven't worked in Tableau before, you probably, hopefully everyone, is there anyone who's never used Tableau Desktop in the room? Okay, perfect. You're all in the right session then. So the data set is very important when you're writing any calculation, understanding what the grain of the data is, as well as the visualization that you're trying to build out, really helps streamline this process. So we're gonna be talking a lot about the data, as well as the types of visualizations that we're building out, and how that factors into the types of calculations we're writing. The data set we're gonna start out with today is pretty simple. It's only 14 rows of data. It's the Chronicles of Narnia and Harry Potter with their years, their book name, and the author information. This data set is something that's very near and dear to my heart. Here's a picture of me looking way too excited at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour um, about 10 years ago. And now, let's talk about how calculations work. So the first calculation we're gonna be talking about are row level calculations. These occur at what we call the grain of the data. So think back to that image I just showed you of this data set with that 14 rows. Calculations that are row level calculations are going to go through, in this case, all 14 rows of data and then return the results. So if I'm writing a calculation to pull out the last name from author, it's gonna look something like this. Can everyone see that in the back? Okay, perfect. So I'm writing a row level calculation that splits out author based off of a specified character and a specified delimiter. So in this case, I'm looking for each one of the periods and then saying, give me the third value. So that way I can pull out just the last name for each one. If you wanna see what this is doing in the underlying data, that calculation is going row by row and pulling out each individual value there. Sorry, there's no way to make that bigger on the screen. The important thing to remember that row level calculations are going to compute at the grain of the data in comparison to aggregate calculations. Who here has written an aggregate calculation before? So a majority of you have, and even if you didn't raise your hand, the chances of you not having used some form of aggregate calculation in Tableau is pretty slim. Have you ever double clicked on a measure in Tableau and seen that like single blue bar pop up? I see a lot of nodding heads. That is in essence writing an aggregate calculation. By default, Tableau really likes to aggregate data to make sure that we have a good understanding of what kind of like metrics we're looking at in the data set. And so we can have aggregations that occur by accident when we double click on something, or we can write intentional calculations that are at an aggregate level. In this case, I want to determine the number of books that are in each series. So I've written a calculation that is the count distinct of book name. What this does is go through that 14 rows of data and say how many distinct book names are in that data set. So we can see that Harry Potter has seven. And when I view the underlying data, 
When I look at the summary information, I just see that seven value. That's letting you know that at the dimensional level of the view, meaning series in this case, I am seeing that aggregate value of seven. To understand what goes into that, you can always look at the full underlying data set, and we're seeing the seven rows that fall under that aggregate value. So what Tableau is doing is rolling up those seven rows of data to the dimensional level of the view. And when we add additional dimensions, this is going to change the way in which our calculation is computing. So here, I have author and book name with the same calculation, that number of books, and it's going to function slightly differently. So instead of simply showing that seven value for the series, this calculation is now computing based off of the author and the book name that are in this view. And while things like filters will matter, something like the order in which these values are shown does not matter. That's gonna be an important distinction when we start talking about what table calculations do and the level at which they compute. When we look at the underlying data, you'll now see that the summary data reflects that level of dimension in the view, which in this case is our author and our book name. So if you ever have a question about kind of what level of dimensionality your view is at, using the summary data for the underlying data details is a really great way to call that up so you know what's being taken into consideration. And last but not least, we're gonna be chatting about level of detail calculations. Level of detail calculations are the newest member of the Tableau calculation family and potentially the most popular. I feel like four years ago, everyone was all hyped up about table calc sessions and they would be jam packed with like seven, 800 people fitting, fitting into like a 400 person room. And now everyone's like, table calcs? Let's talk about LODs. Um, I think there's a place for everyone in this world and level of detail calculations just compute a different, or fill a different role for Tableau. Level of detail calculations allow us to compute at a specified level of detail. And what I mean by that is when we write our level of detail calculation, we actually declare in the syntax the level at which we want this to compute. So that means you can have a more granular value or a less granular value within the same visualization. So here I'm saying at the level of series, give me the minimum year. What this looks like is I'm looking at my individual years here, but I'm still seeing an aggregate value for that min year of the series. The nice thing about this is you can have that mixed grain of data within one visualization. A good comparison is to say, okay, here's my level of detail calculation, that first year of publish, and I've also written a calculation that's just that min year value. So when I'm looking at this crosstab that has all 14 rows of data, even though I'm showing multiple years of data, I'm still seeing that first year of publication here, that 1997 value repeating for every row in that data set. In comparison, our standard aggregate function that computes at the dimensional level of the view is saying, based off of the series year book name, let me pull out that min year value which in this case just matches up with the year in the data set. So this gives you a lot of flexibility in kind of how you want to pull in information. With that in mind, you can do a lot of fun things like pull together both the first year of publication and the last year of publication to get mathematical values to show the kind of total year, total time it took to complete writing the series. 
Now, one thing we haven't talked about is the order of operations in Tableau. Who remembers, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally? Okay, so like half of you raised your hand, the rest of you were not paying attention in third grade math, which is totally fine. We'll explain a little bit about what order of operations means in Tableau, and you don't really need to worry about please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. In this case, we have a fixed calculation, and I've excluded all of the Harry Potter books except for Chamber of Secrets which for those of you who are massive Harry Potter fans will know it is neither the first nor the last Harry Potter book. In this case, even though we don't have the underlying record for the min year or the max year shown here, we can still have that calculation value pull the min year based off of the series and the max year based off of the series. It's a really powerful way of having multiple grains of data combined to answer complex questions. And this order of operation and kind of where things compute become really important when we're talking about table calculations. So it's really important to remember that row level calculations are going to happen at the grain of the data. Aggregate calculations are that dimensional view. Remember, you can always check and verify your dimensional level of detail um, for the view by looking at the summary data in your underlying data details tab. And then level of detail is going to be that specified grain or the specified level of detail that you've put together. Now one thing that all of these calculations have in common, regardless that they don't necessarily compute at the same level, they function in the same way in how they interact with your data sources. The first thing that Tableau will do is write queries that go out to your database and then return results to Tableau, displaying those in your worksheets. So a lot of the compute is all handled on the database side, not locally in Tableau. Table calculations, on the other hand, function differently. And that's kind of what makes them more exciting. Table calculations, do not rely on the database to compute. They're computed locally inside of Tableau. This is in part because of the order of operations of where table calculations fall. You'll notice that they're almost dead last. So everything that we've just talked about, whether you have a row level calculation, an aggregate calculation, or a level of detail, is going to impact the way in which your table calculations will compute. So making sure that you understand how all of those values are put together is really important because everything from the way in which you're aggregating a min value to the sort order that you've applied to a visualization is going to impact the way in which Tableau is looking at each kind of record that we return. And when I say everything matters, I mean everything matters. So this is the pane that everyone should be pretty familiar with if you've used Tableau Desktop before. And all of those areas outlined in blue, any dimension that you have at play is going to impact the way in which your calculation is going to return a result. And things like the sort order become really important. So let's take a look at an example of a table calculation. I want to know the years between each book publication. So here I've got each series, and I've got the year here going down. And it looks pretty right for 1998, 1999, 2000. Those are all showing one year between each one, which looks to be correct. The calculation that we're looking at here is structured as so. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Can y'all in the back see that? We're looking at the min of our year, that same value that we referenced earlier in writing aggregate calculations, and then we're looking up the previous value in the visualization. This is because table calculations have the ability to reference the structure of the table that you're returning. The visualization that you've built out becomes like its own mini data set, 
where you can reference values that appear above or below with a different type of table calculation. So I can look up the min of the year for the record below it and just simply subtract those values. Now the challenge here seems to be when I get to looking at the Chronicles of Narnia. 2007 is negative 57 years from 1950. I don't really care about that. Like that's not particularly relevant to the type of analytical question we're asking here, which is how many years between each book did the author take to complete the next book in the series? We don't really want to be looking at comparing across series. So that's when we have to start playing around with that compute using. Who really enjoys clicking through all of these options in compute using? Yeah? My like standard when I first started at Tableau for trying to figure out how to compute a table calculation was I'd just start clicking on things and I'd say, huh, I wonder what that's doing and then try and look at the underlying data to figure out whether or not that gave me any kind of information about how I was computing. Luckily for us, since version 10, we have had a much nicer UI for the edit table calculation functionality. So in this case, we could do our guess and check and click through until we realized pain down is the correct way to compute this. And we just got lucky, right? Like I clicked on pain down and it worked. Um, that happens a lot with table calculations, I feel like. You're just starting and you're like, yep, that, nope, not quite right. Yes, that one. Um, and then you're like, oh, cool, I got this. And you go to change your visualization in some way. And all of a sudden, everything breaks. So like I just moved 2000 down in between 2005 and 2007. And now I have negative five years. That's because everything in the viz matters in this case. So making sure that you're paying attention to details when you're building your visualization, you're selecting the compute using, and then if you're changing the visualization that you're building becomes more important. So let's talk about what actually that compute using means. So maybe next time we don't just do this, because it turns out we're not alone in this. As with all good things in Tableau, Everyone seems to feel the same way about this. Okay, so I asked you about fourth grade math earlier. Who has fond memories of fourth grade English? A few folks. Who knows what this is? It's a sentence diagram. Okay, that's awesome. Um, originally, the whole like theory for this session was gonna be me talking about sentence diagrams for like 45 minutes. And then I quickly realized that I am one of maybe 10 people in the world who have like an affinity for sentence diagrams. However, I do think they make a great extended metaphor for understanding what Tableau is doing in the compute using dialog box. Sentence diagrams, for those of you who are not freaks about fourth grade English, um, allow us to break down parts of grammar and help us understand how these different parts are functioning together to form a sentence. Can you tell that my husband and my mom are both English teachers? So we're gonna take this sentence, we love Tableau, and diagram it. So if we're looking for the subject, the verb, and the direct object, this one's pretty easy. Who's got the subject? I hear a lot of people like quietly whispering we. I wish it was Tableau. Um, in this case, it's we, and it becomes we love Tableau, Tableau being the direct object. Luckily, this is the only example of diagramming sentences that I'm gonna make you walk through, and we're not gonna spend the next 30 minutes doing this, because they can get really complex depending on the complexity of the sentences. And I thought this made a good analogy in comparing how the compute using works. So the compute using dialog box for those of you who don't just click around all the time, it actually does have a pretty logical way of functioning. And there are quite a few blog posts out there breaking down the compute using dialog box into a nice English sentence. If you're an English major, this makes Tableau a lot easier to use. But in this case, we're saying that the first value, the table calculation that we're looking at, let me make this a little bit bigger for all of us, 
the table calculation that we're looking at, so the years between books that we just saw, we want to compute the years between books by, and then we're looking at that little grayed out portion of the compute using dialog box and seeing that year is checked. So everything that is checked, we're going to say by, and you're going to put comma by. So if there's like seven of them, it'd be by year, by month, by day. And then the unchecked values become for each. So we want to compute the years between books by year for each series. So let's check that. If we're looking at our table calculation series and when we selected pane down, we all agreed that that looked right. So we're computing the years between books by year for each series. And if I set this to be a specified dimension, I then have the flexibility to change my visualization however I want and still have that value be persistent. For me, this is the easiest way to break down what's happening in a table calculation and make it usable across multiple scenarios or once you've kind of built it out, repurpose your visualization, the cross tab that you're building it in, into something more useful for your end users. Because how often do we like build out our table calculation and then go to change the view and everything is gone? Everything breaks? That's a pretty common scenario. So let's talk about how we can set up for success in using the information we just learned about the compute using dialog box and translating that into some actual examples. Sound good to everyone? I see some nodding. Okay. The first thing we want to do is identify the key question that we're trying to answer. This is going to allow us to pull out the correct measures and dimensions that are necessary to answer that question. Because as we talked about earlier, the numeric values as well as the dimensional level of the view becomes really important with how table calculations are computed. Because everything matters, you need to have a clear understanding of the various parts that you want to include in your visualization before you get started. Potentially more so than when you're just building out a basic visualization in Tableau because everything is so interdependent. We then want to build out a cross tab that allows us to check the logic of the table calculation. You can add in extra information, for example, if adding totals or subtotals makes it easier to check the value that you're computing in your table calculations, by all means add those in so you have the appropriate level of context to understand how your table calculation is computing. And then the last thing we're going to do is determine the compute for each one of our calculations based off of that logic that we just followed for turning our table calculations, compute options into an English sentence. And then we're going to change this into the desired visualization. So, anyone interested in seeing this applied in person? Yes, okay. I see a couple people nodding their heads, excellent. So the first thing I'm gonna do is build out a table of data that allows me to look at what I'm trying to understand. So if I wanna answer the question, how frequently are top crossword answers used in Sunday puzzles compared to other days of the week? I'm gonna look at the crossword data set that we have here, which is pulling New York Times crossword answers and how frequently they're used over a period of four years. And we're going to say, okay, based off of our top answers, I've got my days of the week here, and I can see how they're computing in terms of just raw values. But I want to know frequency and compare across different answers. So in this case, we're going to define frequency as kind of the percent of total. So we don't have to write a calculation, luckily, for percent of total. That's going to be a quick table calculation. And I'm just adding in my quick table calculation for percent of total. In this case, it looks like I'm seeing a total of 7% here, 
15%. And if we were to select all of these values, our grand total adds up to that 100% value. I actually want to know the percent of total usage for Sunday for ACE compared to ALA versus ALE. So we need to edit that compute using option. We want to understand how the answer compares for each day of the week. So I want to compute my 4% of total, show the answer by day of week. And so in this case, switching the order there allows me to specify the day of week is what I want to compute by, and I want to compute for each answer. So using that simple sentence structure, we can say, OK, I now want to compute the percent of total by day of week for each answer. Now that we've had this set to specific dimension, we can change up the structure of our visualization to say, do I want to show it in a simple cross tab like this? Or perhaps, do I actually want to show a bar chart for each one of my values and see the percent of total for Sunday in comparison to all other values? So here we can quickly see that ERE has the highest usage in Sunday. Now, we said that order of operations are huge for Tableau table calculations. And in this case, if I wanted to filter to just showing Sunday, I would add my filter for day of week and select Sunday. And womp, womp. Um, now everything is broken because instead of allowing us to compute at that level of detail needed to show the percentage for what Sunday actually is, that information is gone from the view. So unlike a level of detail calculation where I could filter out all of the information for the Harry Potter book series except for one, and I'd still see the results that I expected, in this case, adding in a filter for day of the week fundamentally changes the way in which that's computing. So if I wanted to show that, I could simply select from my color legend all of these and right click and hide. So because of the order of operations that we can play around in with Tableau, hiding happens after the table calculation, which means that all of the information I need to figure out how frequently answers are used in Sunday puzzles, even if I don't care about the rest of the days of the week, can be achieved using a table calculation. So you can play around a lot with the style of the visualization and the information that you're including simply by going through and using that order of operations that we were discussing earlier. Let's see, here. And making sure that where you're allowing your table calculation to compute, it has the right data necessary to return the results you're looking for. So whenever your table calculation breaks, the first thing you do is go back to the order of operations if you search order of operations Tableau in Google, you'll find a bunch of different versions of these. The best one is the one in the online help. It is the most accurate and the most up to date. So that's my personal favorite. And so let's go through one more example here. If I want to know how do my top answers change in rank over time. So what I'm thinking in my head that I want to build out, because a lot of times we have a visualization we're trying to achieve and not just a question we're trying to answer. I've seen those bump charts that people do for their fantasy football teams. I don't care about fantasy football, but I do care about the New York Times crossword puzzle. So I want to know like, how frequently these values change over the years of the data set that we have available to us. So we're looking at 2012 through 2017, the top five most used words for the New York Times crossword puzzle and how often they were used in a given year. 
So I can see that ale was used six times, 17 times, 12 times, 15 times. And I want to know how that compares to the other words in the data set. So we're going to add in a quick, top, quick table calculation for rank. And we're going to see that we have one, two, three, where'd three go? If I edit the table calculation, you'll notice that the type of rank that we can specify is customizable depending on how you want to compute that information. Do you want a rank unique or do you want a dense rank? In this case, we're just going to stick with standard competition rank. That means that if there's a shared value, it's going to show the same rank for each one. And as we're looking across, it looks like these values are pretty good, but I know that leaving it at table across, if I'm trying to change my visualization into something else, is probably going to break the view. So we want to come through and change that to a specified dimension. So saying by year for each answer lets me know where that rank falls. And then I can start changing around the visualization that I have built out. So I'm going to say I want my rank value here. I want to see the answers. Let's see, answers here. I'm going to add all members to the view so I can see what those ranks look like. And if I change this to a discrete value, that doesn't look quite right. So in this case, let's backtrack and talk about what I did wrong there and how we're going to get to the correct values. So I have a view that's showing my top answers here as a set. Then I have computes going across for each rank. What I actually want to do is edit my table calculation so that I'm showing the rank for each answer by year, meaning that I'm looking down the column and I can see one, two, three, four. What we failed to do here is add in the right context for our visualization to check the results. This is why when you're building out table calculations, we always start with a granular table so you understand the values that you're looking at within the view and making sure that you're pulling the right information and that your table calculation is computing correctly. Sometimes you're lucky and it works out okay, and other times something might look right, but because we did not check the correct grain of data for our visualization, we are actually looking at wrong information. With great Tableau power comes great responsibility. I'm sure you've heard people say this before. And with table calculations, it really is true. You need to always be focusing on what the values are showing for each one. So in this case, I can go through and check if this is computing correctly. I can see that seven is my highest value here, and that for each one, I have one, and then Six, two, six, two. So it looks like this is computing correctly, which allows me to then determine whether or not I want to change that visualization. So now that I have that set correctly, I'm going to edit my table calculation, make sure it's set to specific dimensions, that the compute for the type of rank that I have is correct, and then change my view. So in this case, I'm going to look at just the rank value for the top five answers by year. I'm going to change this to actually be a discrete value and then change this to a line. If we edit our colors so that we're using some better color options, now I can compare what my top ranked values were across my whole data set and how that changed over time. So I can see that despite the fact that ALE is often used, it has never been the most used word in any of the New York Times crossword puzzles between 2012 and 2017.
And so, with that in mind, I'd like to say thank you very much for coming to the session. I hope this was helpful for you in terms of figuring out the context for how table calculations are different and unique in comparison to other calculation types. If anyone has questions, you're more than welcome to come up and chat with me. I'll be here for as long as possible. I know we're in a really far room, so I want to give everyone time to get to their next session.